Hello friends, welcome back to my channel if you're returning and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Rachel and I'm a reseller on sites like eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. I like buying merchandise online, whether it's first quality or secondhand, and reselling it on these various platforms for a profit. One of my favorite things to do on this channel is to come back 90 days later and let you know, did I actually make a profit on the boxes that I'm buying? And would I order another one based on my results? So today we are doing a 90 day update on the Helpsy Stores Deluxe and Designer Box. So if you wanna see if I made money and if I'd buy another one, definitely stick around. So I have been generally more drawn to their, to Helpsy Stores' first quality boxes as opposed to their secondhand boxes. But with a name like Deluxe and Designer, I was hooked. I had to try it. This was a 20 piece box and it had a specific brands list of like, only these specific brands will be included in your box. And when you look at the brands list, um, it seemed pretty enticing. And there were some pretty like higher end brands in there that I thought were well worth the money. So I did go ahead and buy one. I'll link the original video down below if you wanna watch the original unboxing video. But today I'm gonna be showing you what actually sold out of that box. So if you like content like this, certainly consider subscribing to my channel. Every time I do an unboxing video, I come back 90 days later, good, bad, or ugly, and I talk about whether or not I actually made money based on my actual results. So if you just like reseller content in general, I would love to have you stick around and hit that like button if you don't mind. It really helps out the channel. It lets me know that you like this kind of content and that I should make more of it. And finally, let me know in the comments if you've purchased this box, let me know how yours did. I am curious to know if mine was similar, my results were similar to yours, uh, or if you had different results than I did. So please let me know in the comments down below. Let's get right into it. So I paid $216 for this box for 20 pieces, making my cost per piece $10.80 for 20 pieces. Um, as of right now, I ended up listing 17 out of the 20 pieces. There were three that had flaws that I just decided not to list. And then there was one that actually it sold and then it, um, the customer wanted to return it and like, you'll see, it just didn't make sense for me to pay for the customer to return it. It was an eBay sale. So I just refunded the money and that one got zeroed out. And of the 17, I have sold, counting the one that got zeroed out, I've sold 11 and I have five still listed. So let's go through what has sold and then I'll talk about what hasn't sold. And then I'll talk at the very end about whether or not I would buy this again based on my results. So what has sold? Um, the first one is this Carl Lagerfeld, um, I put in my notes, the Cartoon Man shirt, because it's literally like, a cartoon avatar man, which lo and behold, you guys called it in the comments of the original video. This is Mr. Lagerfeld, Lagerfeld, Lagerfeld. It is the designer himself, um, Mr. Lagerfeld, um, Carl himself, as you can see, uh, that is that is the actual designer and what he looks like. So anyway, this t-shirt was used. Um, I don't get a ton for, for this brand Anyway, in fact, I don't even pick it up if I find it at the thrift store. Um, so this was a used t-shirt and it was black and it was faded and somebody offered me $9 on eBay. It was only listed two weeks, but I took the $9 because like otherwise this, this one was very borderline like not listing because it just was not in the best condition. And the way that Helpsy pulls their items, they have a brands list for a mixed brand box like this. They pull by the brand. Like, okay, Rachel ordered a box or whoever, and I need to take 20 pieces out of said giant palette Gaylord thing, and I need to pull out 20 pieces and put them in a box and ship them. And so that is exactly how they ship things. And so this brand was on the brand list. The t-shirt was in the box. When I ordered the box, they pulled 20 items and they sent them to me. That's kind of what we're working with here. And so the luck of the draw is, you know, it, it wasn't in my favor with that t-shirt, let's just say. Um, 
The next one up was the brand Donnie, which upon some further research, I found out that this is, brand is actually an anthropology brand. Um, but this was like an open front striped cardigan sweater. And this one didn't have a size, or it was like a one size fits most. So I wasn't really sure exactly what to do with it, but um, it did actually sell. It took about two months, but it did sell on Poshmark in a bundle. So the price that you see here is probably higher than what I have in my notes. My notes say $13 because that was the allocation of the amount that I got for this particular item in that bundle of several items. So $13 on that one. Um, it wasn't the most current style. It was a pretty basic piece. So, um, and after two months, I'm like, okay, whatever. Somebody wants to put it in a bundle. I wasn't really interested in holding on to it. It didn't have a ton of attention otherwise. So that's fine. Um, then up next was this black blouse by the brand Frame. Um, Frame used to be at one point a really good brand. I can't sell it to save my life these days, to be honest. And this blouse was actually really unique. And it was like, it was plain black, but just the way it was cut was very unique. I could not find a stock photo and it was very hard to photograph. So that was working against me a little bit, um, but it actually did sell. It took about two and a half months but it sold for $19 by offer on Poshmark. So I was glad to see it go regardless. Um, not a ton of profit in that one, but it sold. It's better than nothing, right? Um, the next item was actually a surprisingly quick sale. And um, this was the Rocket Petite High Rise Skinny Jeans in Black from Citizens of Humanity um, in a size 26. So 26 Petite. Anything in Citizens of Humanity, Hudson, Joe's, I don't know, all of those like higher end denim brands, Rag & Bone, if they're not super in style, they may have retailed for very high, but they do not sell for jack squat. And especially if it's a smaller size, like good luck. I, I wouldn't have picked these up thrifting. But they were in otherwise really good condition. So I decided to list them anyway. And these actually sold within a week for $20 on Poshmark. And now for what they were, I expected that this was going to be an item on the list of unsold. And it was one of the first thing to sell. So somebody probably sent me a $20 offer. Either that or I listed them for $20 and wasn't expecting more. I'm not really sure. But either way, I am so glad that those sold. I feel like I got paired with the right buyer at the right time. And that one might have been some kind of fluke because otherwise I wasn't expecting to sell those. The next up pair, this was actually a really nice pair of pants. And the brand though was Marameco for Target. And this was one of, I think, four pieces in this box that were designer branded for Target. And when helps you when their sorters were going through this stuff. You know, I, I've been to their warehouse. I've seen their, their sorting process. I can tell you right now, the sorters saw the first name, Marameco. That's what they typed into their little tablet. And it, it instructed them to put this item in the deluxe and designer box. However, they're probably not trained to know that the four target collaboration significantly in most cases significantly lowers the value of that brand so I, I wasn't actually getting Marameco if I'm even saying that right I was getting a piece from Target so definitely some constructive criticism some some feedback for Helpsy Source on that one would be um, the Target collabs do not belong in this box and this was a very very nice pair of pants um, it, the colors were fun and I, I liked them. If they were my size, I would have maybe considered, you know, taking them. It was something I think I would wear personally. Um, but the value is just not there when it's a Target collaboration. So these ended up selling for $27 on Poshmark. And that was an offer. I had sent an offer. I think I had them listed for 30. And so I sent the 10% off with discounted shipping. And it was, I think, the first thing to sell. But still, it, you know, it wasn't going to sell for more than that. It just, it, I think they were like $50 brand new. So that was about the best I was going to do. Next up was this mini, no, I guess it was a midi dress from Ted Baker. It was a size two and I couldn't find a style name on this dress to save my life. I tried. I couldn't find anything on it. And it was actually missing a belt. There was a belt that should have been with it, which... 
I don't necessarily know that their sorters would have known that, but in my eyes, it was flawed because I couldn't sell the dress as the whole dress. And this actually finally sold just like, this one took three and a half months. It just sold a couple days ago, like, like a week ago, a week and a half ago. And uh, the buyer actually reached out to me after she got it and asked, did I forget to send the belt? Which I put right in the listing um, that the belt was not included. So, of course, I had to like, I always feel like I'm being rude when I have to point out the obvious. But I had to say like, hey, I did put in the listing that the belt's not included. And then she said, oh, sorry, I didn't notice that. And then she gave me my five stars and my earnings got released, whatever. But yeah, this, this uh, again, you know, if it would have been the whole dress, I might have gotten more for it. But because it was missing the belt, uh, $27 sale by offer. So it was listed for 30 Actually, I think this dress was listed a lot higher initially, and I just had to keep dropping, dropping, dropping the price for the sake of getting rid of it. This, The colors in this dress are very fall and winter, so I didn't want it to be sitting come springtime because it just didn't seem like it'd be something that people would buy in, this, in the warmer months. So that's out of here. Um, then I had this low-rise pinstripe skirt, which we were all kind of laughing at uh, when I opened this box. I, I was laughing at it, but actually... Um, this was one of the first things to sell also, like maybe the second or third thing to sell. It sold very quickly on Poshmark and I got $29 for it. So again, for what it was, $29 is not all that bad. I still don't know what Tiger Mist is or where it's sold or where it came from or why it's in this box. But I mean, I will take a quick $29 sale. I mean, I still made what, 14, 15 bucks on it, you know, in profit. So whatever tiger mist i wouldn't pay up for it but apparently it's a quick seller and i have such a hard time selling skirts i was very surprised that this sold so quickly then there was the, and this was another uh, target color this was another collaboration i guess this one wasn't target but this was lower end collab with higher end if you even want to call it that it was zara good american so it was good american for zara so these were a pair of 90s relaxed jeans in a size 14. Great style, great size. I probably would have listed them for 60 or 70 in good condition. Maybe not got that much, but I would have at least listed and taken offers. But because these were a Zara collaboration, I mean, I think Zara is probably better than Target because it's a little more trendy, but even still, completely like the fabric was different. You could tell the material, material was lesser quality. I've sold a ton of actual Good American. This was not like real Good American. There's no way. Um, and these sat and sat for over three months, like three months and one week. And then they finally sold for $32 on Poshmark, which again, for what they were, is actually uh, pretty decent. But um, they definitely did not move quickly. And uh, I don't think they should have been in this box as good American if they were good American for Zara, in my, my personal opinion. And you'll have to let me know in the comments if you, like, I don't know, do you agree? Do you disagree? Like, should we be using these big box collabs for designer items? Let me know what you think. All right, top three. We're already at the top three. Um, this was a ruffled floral maxi skirt from the brand Yumi Kim. This one made me so nervous because I ordered a whole box of Yumi Kim dresses and I hadn't sold one of them. At this point, like no interest. So I'm like, great, more Yumi Kim is going to be sitting around here. But this dress actually sold in 10 days and it got a lot of interest. So I don't know if I just got a bad batch of who knows what from uh, the liquidation that I bought, but maybe this was a more sought after piece. Um, this, this one actually, if I remember correctly, the lady got it and she said it didn't fit and she wanted to send it back and she started a return on eBay. I, If it's fit or something, whatever, I offer returns. I, I will allow people to send things back to me, but they have to pay the shipping and I get an actual return like once in a blue moon, like maybe once a month or once every two months, I'll get an item returned to me from eBay. I'm pretty sure this customer opened a return but then she like never actually sent the dress back to me. So it's counted as a sale, sold in 10 days on eBay for $44 plus shipping. Um, so it almost wasn't a sale, but in the end it was. And then the next one up, this one probably doesn't come as a surprise that it's high up on the countdown here. Um, 
when I did the original unboxing, you guys commented that this was a great piece. This was the um, brown and orange like crochet dress from the brand Peruvian Connection. This one, I might have not gotten as much as I could have for it. I think I listed it for 75, hoping that I would get, you know, a, a semi good offer. And I actually got a lot of interest on this, but no takers for, oh my gosh, six weeks. This, oh, oh, this one sold on my birthday. This was a birthday sale. Oh yes, that's why I let this go so low. So I did a birthday sale on my birthday. I turned 38 back in November. And so I did, I sent, I used the My Shoppers feature on Poshmark. And I, I don't like doing that a lot because it's annoying. I get annoyed when people send me my shopper emails and my bundles. So I try to do it like only maybe once or twice a year. But my birthday over the past two years, I think, I've done it and it's actually been successful. So I offered 38% off bundles of three or more. And so somebody on my birthday... Um, they put this item in a bundle with two other items. And so the amount that I got for this one item was $46.50. Again, I had it listed for like $75. Um, and I wasn't going to like not sell it. <laughs> so I had gotten a ton of lowball offers anyway. And this was still semi-reasonable to me. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm not complaining about it. Um, and also, if I'm going to do a sale like that, I am not that person that's going to like say, but this isn't on sale or mark things not for sale. I don't have time for that. Either everything's on sale or nothing's on sale on Poshmark. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. I'll still take the 4650 as a win. And then the highest selling item out of this box, again, not surprising based on your comments. You guys were like, oh, this is a great brand, a great brand. Um, the brand was AYR and it was this striped button front oversized shirt this one did have some staining on it, some makeup stains, so I had to wash it and stain treat it, and it took me a little bit of work, um, which I don't, I don't like putting time into mending things. I, I just, I'm not a fan of it, um, but I did for this brand because I did look up comps on this shirt, and I figured it would be well worth it, and it was. Um, this was a $55 eBay sale. This one, again, I listed it on all three platforms, eBay, Poshmark, Mercari. I got a ton of lowball offers. But on the second day it was listed, somebody offered me 55 on eBay. I was hoping to get somewhere between 60 and 70. I knew I was going to just keep getting lowball offers if I didn't just accept it. So I went ahead and accepted that $55 offer. But it was only listed for two days. So that was very exciting. And considering I had to like wash it and treat it, you know, it was, it was fine. I'm, I was, I'm glad that I was able to sell it for that much. There were four things that I had pulled out, um, that I didn't sell. There were a couple I was like on the fence about that didn't end up selling. So I had that hell bunny dress that like rockabilly polka dotted dress. Um, it was missing. A, one of the buttons had fallen off, but it was like tied up in the strap so I probably could have just sewn the button back on. Um, so I had put it aside and I was going to repair it. The problem is I don't sew. Like, I just, I don't. And so it sat here and sat here, taking up space behind me. And I, after like, I don't know, two and a half months of it sitting here, I just threw it in the Goodwill bag. Because when I looked up comps on the dress... They weren't even that high. And I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time. You know, I could probably list like 10 other items in the time it would take me to like sit down and half-ass sew a button onto this because I don't even know how to sew. And I don't even know if it would be like a good sewing job. Not that I think it takes rocket science to sew on a button, but you have to consider the placement and you have to consider the stitching and how it's like stitched on the other side because now there's two buttons and I just... Not me, not me. It went to Goodwill. Sorry, not sorry. It was too much work. And then the other one I'm kind of sad about, and I almost wonder, could I listed, could I have listed this the way it was and maybe still got a little money? And I guess I don't know. But it was this 100% silk um, skirt from the brand ALC. This one was also missing a button. The button was not included with it. So I kind of had two options. I could either use the button from the Hell Bunny dress or I could find another button, which I don't have. 
um, and then try to sew a button on that. Or I could have listed it and disclosed that it was missing a button. I just didn't do any. I was in like rage clean mode. I needed to like get stuff out of here. And so that one also got donated. That one I might have been able to just sell and disclose that it was missing a button. It was a high end designer piece. I think probably for me, I think that probably was the most valuable thing in the box. So that might have been my bad on me, but it was damaged. I And I just, I don't deal with damages. Um, and then the... There was that those Halston Heritage pants. The seam, the hem was coming undone at the bottom. So again, I wasn't going to fix those. Based on comps, they weren't worth listing and disclosing. So those just got donated. Um, there was that Marnie at H&M. Here's another low-end collab. Maybe they weren't all Target. This one was Marnie at H&M. So Marnie, great brand. H&M, crap, right? I think I listed this for 20 bucks. I wasn't going to get more than that. I it just, it's not worth it. And it was like, I don't know. It was just, it was a weird piece. And so I finally sold it for $15 on eBay, um, just like a week and a half ago. And, um, the lady messaged me and said that it was likely missized because it was a six. And she said she's a true size six and she couldn't, give, couldn't even get her arm into it. So the fabric did feel a little funny to me. I'm almost wondering if maybe it was shrunken. And either way, she didn't open a not as described case. She just asked if she could return it. So I said yes. And then I, when she opened the return, I just refunded her the, the whole amount. I didn't want her to pay to send it back to me. I didn't want to pay to get it back. And if it really is like wonky in some way, I wouldn't know it's not my size. I had a suspicion it was wonky to begin with. I just told her to donate it or throw it away or whatever. Like there's no point in me having it back. I'm not going to relist it. So I did, um, because I refunded her the shipping amount, I'm out $7.50 on that item. Um, and then I, because I didn't refund her, because I refunded her the shipping amount, I'm actually out $7.50 on this item because... I, um, you know, I paid to ship it. Actually, I'm out the $7.50 that the customer paid for shipping. Plus, I'm also out $6.78, which is what it actually cost me to ship it. So, total $14.28 in the hole on that one item. Wah, wah. Okay, and then the four items I still have left. This is nothing to write home about, believe me. I've got these gray pants from the brand APC. No interest, not one like, not one watcher in this almost four months now um, since I've had these. This yellow slip dress, uh, out of season, I guess, technically. I don't know what the brand Aiden is. Never heard of it. It doesn't feel like anything quality. No interest, no likes, nothing. Um, probably the gem out of the box is still here. Um, that Tory Burch, like... Uh, cloak front sweater. It was like that metallic rose gold. Beautiful dress. Brand new with tags, mind you. Retailed for $400 plus dollars. Uh, size two extra small. So hard size to sell. Not impossible. I just sold a pair of 23 jeans today. So not impossible. But right by our situation, I'm not surprised it's still sitting here. And I, being that it's a smaller size, I don't know that I'm going to get anywhere close to what it retailed. So, and then the other thing that's still here are the something navy ruffly sweatpants. These are just weird. They're just weird. That's not Helpsy's fault. It's just, they're weird. And I haven't had any interest, not even a little bit on these. So these are probably going to go to buy, sell, trade here soon because uh, I don't foresee them selling anytime soon. So that's everything. Um, if you are interested in anything I have left, please check out my eBay Poshmark Mercari, shameless plug. I would love to sell one of these items to you. And the last item that hasn't sold that I actually just recently pulled pulled down because I'm about to start doing an audit and I'm like, no one's going to buy this either. So this is the Comptoir des Cantonia. I totally just butchered that. Seriously. I don't even know. I'm going to put it here. This is, this is the brand. This is the shirt. 
I, no interest on this whatsoever. It's got buttons along the collar, but nothing attached to it, which indicates to me it might be missing a piece. Um, nobody wants this either. So, yeah. So then there's that. Um, so to review, I paid $216 for this box. I ended up listing a total of 16, 17 pieces, 17 pieces for remaining. As of right now, my profit on this box, I spent $216. I've made $264. So I'm like just barely over the break-even point. So, was this a good box? No, it was not. I feel very lucky and fortunate to have broken even on this box. And honestly, now that I'm looking back at it, I really should have like emailed them because I, with Helpsy, we should all expect 15% flaw rate. That's built into their business model. They say clothes aren't trash. We're going to give you some stuff with light flaws in you know hopes that you can repair it wash it whatever and still get some money out of it and keep it out of a landfill there were way more than 15 percent of these items were flawed if i go down the list okay the ayr shirt was flawed technically it had makeup stains so that should have counted as one um the ted baker dress was missing a belt um the Carl Lagerfeld shirt was just like faded. I mean, it was definitely like had wash wear. I don't know if that counts or not, but I'm going to say it counts. Um, the ALC skirt was missing a button. Um, the Hell Bunny skirt was missing. Their dress was missing a button. The Comptoir whatever was looked like it was missing a piece because it had buttons on the collar. I don't We I guess we can't count that because we don't know for sure. Um, and then... There were the four, the the Halston Heritage um, pants, and then the Marnie blazer that was shrunken. I'm not going to count that either because I mean it was hard to tell, but that's six out of twenty. Um, so six out of twenty right there is thirty uh, thirty percent. So it should have been only three or less. Six out of twenty were flawed, and then there were three that were questionable. And then on top of that, there were there were four that were like low end big box brand collabs. There was the um, the Marnie at H and M, the Marimekko for Target, the Zara Good American, and I swore there was one more. Maybe not. I think that might have been in a different box that I'm thinking of. But even still, like those three things should not have been in this box anyway. So. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, I didn't say anything. I still made my money back. I think the only piece that still has a chance here is that Tory Burch dress. So if I can sell that Tory Burch dress for $75 to $100, and, and in my opinion, that's a stretch, then I will still not have doubled my money. So was this a good box? No, it was not. Um, I haven't seen this box available. And uh, if it was available, I probably would not order it again. Um, just because of my experience with this one, there's so many other better boxes that they've had. I, I love help C source. I really do. I have made so much money on selling boxes from them to the point where I was able to quit my job and just source online in these boxes and like not work and take care of my kid. Like it's that, I can't stress to you how good they've been to me with their boxes. This one was not this one was not it and that's why I said I really want to know how you did if you ever ordered one of these um, because it is possible like I said they just pull 20 items of the brand um, this one may have been a fluke and I think part of it is is the flaw rate and the big box collabs that just slipped through the fingers of the sorters and they just it, they didn't catch it so yeah anyway that's my thoughts on this box I uh, I hope you will let me know what you think and if you like content like this, certainly consider subscribing to my channel. My whole channel is centered around talking to resellers about what's working for me, or in this case, what's not working, in hopes that it helps you make decisions for your own reseller business, whether you're just getting started or you're looking for new ways to source. So I would love to have you in a future video. Hit that like button on the way out if you don't mind. It certainly, like I said, it helps me out. It lets me know you like this kind of content and it really does support the channel. 
And that is it for today, friends. I will catch you in the next video.